So on line 124, it's if PID OS child is done exit to parent if PID. So it, it's killing off the it's killing off one, but then it would go to if log file do that, and then it goes to funk. What's this funk on 133? Oh, it's callable? Okay. Oh, it's demonized. Okay. Okay. It's a callback thingy. Mm. Server. Got it. Serve. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. C c c can I? S mm. So at some point, there's probably some kind of while loop or some listening loop, some busy loop. Um, inside serve. Okay. Uh, while true. Okay. So while true, it's right to call the standard out. And it's, I see. So it looks like they're using. This is a very interesting way they would set this up. Why would they do it like this? I'm trying to think. Because that means that DMyPy, there's probably a good reason. Anyway. Um, so this is the while loop. I'm trying to see at the point where they're listening for messages. Re response update? I guess it's in here somewhere, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. I see. I'm really not that yeah I think I get it I'm not a huge fan of this implementation but um so it's running commands okay all right anyway continue using it's using the the sock stuff yeah so it is using pipes okay <laughs> why 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 would they do it like this this is kind of like I mean it's it's a little bit lower level than it needs to be in my perspective they could use multi-processing Yeah, I mean, it's there's there's a couple ways you could do this. Yeah, there's probably a couple. They they it sound it seems like they just want to use OS level, um, OS level infrastructure for this stuff. The thing is, like, I wonder if this is compatible with, say, Windows. You know what I mean? Like, it's 
Yeah. And then Mac, because when once you're doing things through the OS, sometimes there's a little like there's differences across the different platforms you'd have to support. But if you can use, if you could use like, it might be fine. It might be fine. Maybe the OS library in Python is multi-platform and reasonable. But yeah, but like see see this OS open dev forward slash null, like that wouldn't work in Windows. I don't. Windows doesn't have dev null like that directory, so so this would be like a Unix. Oh, it, it says so. Uh, do a bunch of Unix stuff, but what does it do for Windows? Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, this is my. Yeah, this was what I was thinking. It's like they would have to explicitly support all the different operating system protocols for, say, multi multi process commu inter process communication and shit like that. So. It's all right. I mean, I, I, I almost feel like there might be a better way, but it's okay. It's okay. Let's just, uh, let's just go with this for now. So that that's so is that is that out of the box an issue with with my Pi Demon or is that something to do with the Jack Lang? What what I did what I did uh, for the my Pi okay is like I injected this V to PY so what what this V what this V do is like it will uh, inside inside my Pi itself when when it tries to like compile a Python file. Mm. Okay, I will check if this is a Jack file, then I will call uh, this code. So what this code does is like to, to, to parse the Jack file and output the Python ASP. Okay? Okay. Then I will inject this Python ASP inside inside the graph. Got the it. File graph. Okay. I see. And if mm. there is if there is no Jack file, uh, if there is no Jack file, it will continue in, in my file. Mm -hmm. I think will help. I see. Okay. Okay. So uh, I assume uh, that uh, when I call the my file for a Python stuff, okay, mm -hmm. it will <coughs> it will not trigger any code I create. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why I assume this issue is the uh, my file itself, but I didn't try it in like uh, uh, a new version <coughs> of my file. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the first issue, and this issue didn't bother me a lot, to be honest. The yeah. issue that I was uh, checking was this one. Uh, so I will try to do some type checking for this pump uh, to Jack. Do you know, do you know, so MyPy also has like, it'll cache results, right? Like even if it's not running the daemon, it'll cache results. So I wonder how much, like, is running the daemon much faster than just caching the results? You know, like, so if you have, if you have like a, a big code base uh, and you only, and you type check it, it caches the results. 
and then you were to just type check one more file, like, or you just changed one file and type check that. Um, do we know if? Yeah, it'll use the cache and only and only check the changes right from that one file. I wonder how much how much faster is using the daemon? Is is the daemon doing the same thing? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably because it's the the, and this is runs, right? Or is this checks? Yeah. Cause, cause there is a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this this tool is, is not being triggered uh, when the find grand manager find uh, grand manager is not is not uh, mm. it is already it's already there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So when the find grand manager is full, find grand instrument. 
Honestly, yeah. I mean, what I'm thinking, dude, is there's probably um, there's probably a an approach we might want to take where we'll you know when you call that uh, I forget what the name of the file is. It's in the type check pass, I think that py where you call the load graph or process graph that process graph. I'm wondering if you were to, if we were to change one, if, if there's a way to, like we could take over all of this and be able to call process graph multiple times on the same graph and it use the cached results. So, so in the graph, right, you have, yeah? Instead of, instead of using the DMIPI approach. Using the DMI approach where you know, we could set up our own running process, right? Because we have an AST with all of the IR and all of the types and the uh, and everything already loaded. I, I envision a world where we can write something that checks whether or not a file changed that that AST covers. And if a file that the AST covers changes, Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. 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 Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly right. And and so if if we could use that infrastructure in my pie. Basically, if we were to de detect a jack file changes, we could essentially generate regenerate that part of the AST and then plug it into the AST to replace it and then do a call to MyPy with just that AST node as the replaced, you know, MyPy file or whatever. You know what I mean? I think we should probably instead of uh going through this 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 kind of complicated approach of retooling dmypy to support jack it might be simpler for us to have our own daemon approach which which uses multiprocess or whatever um and then hook into mypy more directly like we do with type check pass you know um but what i can do is at some point so so maybe okay so I might need to think about it because I think maybe the first thing we want to do is is create general support for if you have an AST in memory that you've already built, like you've already kind of compiled a whole Jack project, and then you have the super AST with all the all of the the super AST that co that covers all of the modules. Um, so if we have that in memory, and then we wanted to reprocess one file and then update the the overarching AST without necessarily regenerating everything. I think maybe we could build that infrastructure because then that infrastructure would allow us to have the Python AST updated. And then if we can push that Python AST into the MyPy load graph caching infrastructure, then yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. So, so yeah. If you have like two two files, okay, mm -hmm. or I call it like uh, if you have like three files, mm -hmm. okay, and we already called the uh, jack check on them, so we already have like one AST, one jack AST. We mm -hmm. have all these three files. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. If one of these two files has been changed, mm -hmm. so we need not to recreate all the three files. Right. But how 
how to know which part of the song. So is the song have like three classes and only one class? Yeah, I know, I know. I think we're gonna have to redo the entire I think we're gonna have to do the entire file first. So I think we'll do it at the level of the module first because and then we can think about that as an add-on feature. You know you know what I mean? Um so Oh, where you can just check the one class? Which, which, which functionality? You mean the functionality of the... Yep. Sure. Okay. Yeah. No. We can. I just we need to do something like this. Like to to have like. So yeah. Let me. Which part of the ACU? So so where where in the could could you go to that could you go to that comment in the code base? ASC diff, uh, interesting. So you see, the thing about AST diff is you probably have to rebuild the AST. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, we could do this. Yeah, we could take advantage of this, 100%. We could take advantage of this. Um, we could, in, in the Jack infrastructure, we could, we could do it at the level of the module. This AST this diff, I'm assuming, uh, will, will assume that you've already processed the Python AST. And then it would just do the update on the AST, which is which is cool. So we could take advantage of this in addition to the jack at the jack at the level of the jack. We can kind of read, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so what I yeah. So I mean, what I could do is I could show you where. I mean, you probably know. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Basically, yeah, yeah. I know you. You probably. I think you know already. Um, it's in. Uh, yeah, compiler. Yeah, me. Um. So I mean, I I think it it would be something like. Sure. Mm -hmm. I it, it really this might be something to do in the workspace in that workspace location. It might be. I mean, we. I think we should create like a command line. Uh, the way to start this would be to create a command line um, watcher, right? Where it's just watching a whole directory. It's kind of like workspace, right? So it's watching a whole directory, and then it's creating all of the ASDs. And keeping that in a table, and then if any file changes, it detects the file change, and will just update. So it really is. Go to workspace.py. Yeah. Um, so like, if you go down uh, in the workspace, you see where it's like rebuild. There's rebuild workspace. That's the whole directory. It'll kind of walk the whole directory and build a table of all the ASDs, the full ASDs. But if you scroll below that, there's a rebuild file. And so basically, it's almost like we would want like some kind of command line, uh, like command line toolkit, or or some kind of command line, you know, um, watcher where you can trigger a rebuild file. And then 
you could test the implementation of that more precise kind of um yeah so i i would almost in the cli have like a mode where like cli workspace right um like jack workspace and then jack workspace would just have a kind of always running thing that will watch for file changes in the workspace and when a file changes in the workspace just rebuild that one file so i would do that as kind of the test harness mm -hmm. does that make sense For a precise file, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, and inside ribbon file, we need to like have the utility of checking if the file has been changed or not. And if it has been changed, so it will do the rebuilding. If it's not, it will not do anything. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And if, if okay, and if, uh, and this will have to be like in uh, a server or something like or something. Uh, in the background, like mm -hmm. a thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we will interact with this team. Yep. Maybe we, we maybe we can do it uh, without the need of demon, like to save. Yeah, the yeah. For now, exactly, exactly. Okay. All right. Fine. Yeah, that's actually that's reasonable. I just I thought this is already done. Uh, there is uh, when I try when files yeah 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 build it's there's there's some stuff like that in in the build in, if you go to cli.py there's a you can do it it is that it's related to that jir stuff right so if you look at um yeah cli.py and you go to build uh def build or whatever yeah like here is where it builds jir files um and the jri files essentially are ASTs. <laughs> it's basically the AST with the bytecode attached to the AST. So yeah. the module nodes will have like the full bytecode of each. Um, the the module AST types will have the full bytecode of the modules that's in the AST. And so so basically that out that IR is a complete you know bundle um, of modules. And so, yeah, so there is some infrastructure here you could kind of read and like kind of understand how to kind of navigate that. But, uh, but Gamal, like as you go on this journey, feel free to slack me frequently. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be more available. Uh, come Monday onward, I'll be more available. So like stat, you feel free to slack me every step of the way um, as you work on this, you know. But I think that's what we should do. We should kind of create like this, this kind of workspace watcher to test like this incremental update type features. Task will be like to finalize all these three. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
Then we meet. Sure, sure, perfect. Beautiful. Yeah, 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 that's good. That's good. I think, yeah, that's, that, I think that's great. And just uh, keep me posted. I'm, I'm happy to kind of, you know, pair code this asynchronously. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Thank you. That'd be awesome, dude. That'd be super awesome. And if you get stuck or if anything's like super tricky, uh, I'd be happy to hop on a huddle with you, you know? Yeah. Awesome. All right, man. Good. All right. Keep me posted. Awesome. Yep. Talk soon. Yep. Later. Bye. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. I'm going to hop off. I got a couple things. I got I to gotta run out. Run out and do a couple things, so. Peace.